What's up guys, this is Prashant and I'm here with a video sharing some of my coding principles, UX decisions, tips, tricks and the technologies that I used while developing my portfolio website. If you haven't checked out my portfolio website yet, head over to prashantsani.com. This video is primarily made to share some of my learnings as a front-end developer and anyone working as a website designer or developer can follow along. All the links shared in this video are available in the description box below. First, I would like to start with the design part of this website. And uh, when I first gave my first uh, brief to Maithili Hariharan, the designer of this website, I was very clear on a couple of things. One, I needed a dark theme website. Two, I needed a website to showcase my ability to create interactive experiences on web. And three, every design element had to be generated via code. I wanted a black theme website for a simple reason that every other portfolio website these days is a white uh, theme based uh, website. And I wanted to break the tradition. Also, I love the fact that having a dark theme for this site has given it a very cosmic and a tech feel to it. Now, every section heading is accompanied by an opening and a closing tag, which is very similar to how HTML is represented in a code editor. Also, the content that you see here is kind of indented, which again follows a similar pattern. Okay, now uh, in terms of code, one of the first things that I would want to talk about is critical rendering path. In a nutshell, it talks about progressively loading the content, keeping the first priority on critical or the first paint of the website. For instance, instead of having uh, to load everything on uh, 1.5 seconds as this unoptimized uh, image shows, it is better to progressively start loading and showing the above the fold content within a couple of seconds as this first image shows. For me, the critical content was the preloader logo and the and, and I had lazy loaded any CSS or JavaScript or any asset that comes in the way of rendering it on the screen. In most of the cases, you would see the first paint happening anytime within a second and the entire website loads within three seconds. You can learn more about critical rendering path through this course by Udacity. I've used a very clever way to load my non-critical CSS with a technique described by Scott Gell. Uh, while, uh, and this technique was uh, kind of developed while he was working on a plugin by the name load CSS for the first experiment we kind of placed a CSS file at the very end of the page uh, this technique is very similar to a kind of a technique in which people put the JavaScript files at the end of the page For the second experiment, he placed a dummy, he created a new link tag and placed a dummy uh, kind of media to it by the name OnlyFoo. Then he put a set timeout and uh, kind of uh, this is how he lazy loaded the CSS. Now he found out that uh, the second technique was uh, quite uh, efficient and optimized in terms of the load time so I've used the second technique and you can know more about this technique by heading over to the link that I've shown before the next thing that I would want to talk about is the performance I have made sure that every single line of code added to the website has some functionality and the overall file size of this website has been kept as minimal as possible the website is primarily hand coded without using any framework like bootstrap and uh, although i have nothing against bootstrap i feel it's a wrong tool 
for a website like this, which has a custom grid and an unconventional layout. Unlike most of the responsive websites, which focuses on making uh, uh, kind of desktop websites work on mobile, this follows a mobile first approach in which every single byte transferred counts. A lot of people still access the content through 3G and in spite of uh, 3G, uh, in spite of prices of 3G and internet in general is gone down. But I feel it's very, it's, I, but I feel it's every de developer's responsibility to optimize as much as possible. The website file size is less than 300 KB. And just to give you a context of how small the file size is, here is an article on SitePoint which uh, points out that average web page is around 2.2 MB. So in spite of being interactive, scroll-based, heavy website, I've managed to pull down to size, pull down the size to roughly 300 KB. You can know more about uh, this by you can know more about uh, the trends uh, in terms of the file size by heading over to this HTTP archive link. And as of February to 2000, 2017, Jan 2017, it's around uh, 2.3 KB, 2.3 MB. So browser screens refresh at 60 frames per second. Thus it's ideal for us to optimize our animation and scrolling at 60 frames per second. Pages should not only load quickly, but also run well. Scrolling should be stick to finger fast and animations and interactions should be silky smooth. The website uses a lot of and website uses a lot of code and to be honest uh, optimizing for 60 frames per second for a website like this could be sometimes very a dif very difficult task but nevertheless one way uh, this could be achieved is to know how browsers render and paint the content and this article by Paul Lewis talks in details about how this is achieved CSS triggers is an interesting website when it comes to uh, knowing uh, uh, kind of what uh, properties are triggered while animation. Uh, so it has a tabular uh, information of steps taken by browsers while they go through an anim while they go through animating a CSS property. While ideally uh, the animations while while animating an element, we should only use opacity and transforms more than any other property. The property will change is quite a controversial one and sometimes it kind of rasterizes the elements while animating. I chose the property, I chose to use the property very carefully and I would advise anyone planning to use this property to go through this article by Greensock. As you can see, uh, it's kind of uh, rasterizing and making it a little blurry while animation when we have used uh, will change. Okay, now talking about HTML validations. While 100% validation is practically not possible for any website, I've made sure most of the content is as much as valid as much as validated as possible why but why validated but why validate at the first place i've shared a, i've shared my views on validation as a medium.com post websites are made for users and every design choice could be made to benefit the user a lot of websites these days use scroll hijacking a technique that controls the scrolling behavior and or the speed of user scrolls. I was always against this technique as I feel it's an anti-pattern and uh, we should not take the control of uh, the scrolling behavior from the users. And Vato has written a great post on this. Uh, also, I uh, thought it's a good deal to avoid CSS based, uh, JavaScript based uh, scroll bars and I use CSS scroll bars instead.
okay so accessibility is deeply taken into consideration while developing this website hidden released a book on accessibility and i've reviewed the book of uh, earlier on my blog nevertheless this is one of the best resource to get familiar with uh, accessibility whether you are a designer or a developer although javascript is enabled on most of the devices i feel uh, we should also make uh, provisions for uh, uh, browsers and devices which don't have javascript enabled so i made sure most of the content is as much accessible as possible to all the browsers and devices which don't have javascript enabled most of the creative code that you see on the website is done using svg which is an xml based image format whether it's accessibility scalability file size browser support or the dom navigation you could probably inspect an element and you could probably see what kind of uh, stroke what kind of text what kind of code it uses svg is currently one of the best front end technologies that could be used for vector elements to get familiar with svg i would recommend two books practical svg by uh, chris coyer and uh, smashing magazine smashing book 5 sara soedan has written an extensive 80 page chapter on smashing book 5 most of the dom manipulations are managed with snap svg an open source uh, javascript libra library which is which i would say is more like jquery for svg all the animations are managed with green sock and uh, the scroll animations are triggered by scroll magic although initially i was tempted to use smell for svg animations which is kind of native specification for svg but i did not use svg as it's deprecated in most of the browsers Sara Dressner has written an amazing post on uh, smell alternatives and most of these techniques involve uh, either using CSS or using Twinmax Twinmax being a library from Gzap or Greensock Raster image uh, raster image format WebP has been quite popular in recent times because of its low file size In spite of being only supported in Google Chrome and Opera, I chose to use WebP with an image with a fallback. The reduction in file size in most of the cases was anywhere between 40 to 70 percent. I used a Mac app Weaponize to convert my images. Stu, one of the contributors of Modernizer, has written a detailed post on how we could use uh, WebP images with a fallback. all the projects and transitions are handled via ajax and it's absolutely essential for any ajax website to have a friendly shareable link so every so on every time so every time if a user clicks on one of my case studies i manipulate the browser history using a custom javascript that takes advantage of history api I did not use any polyfill for this as I think it's very well supported in a lot of browsers. So, um uh, uh, there's something called as Google Frame uh which was a plugin for Internet Explorer that enabled rendering of the full browser canvas using Google Chrome's rendering engine. but the project was shut down in 2014 and google ceased the support for the same unfortunately not many websites have removed the meta tag from uh, for the google chrome which is this this along with several other code snippets are not these along with several other code snippets are not part of this website that includes uh, i8 and below specific uh, html classes last but not the least 
hit the like button on this video share comment and subscribe to my youtube channel um, i would be sharing more tips tricks on making uh, fast accessible creative websites through my blog and youtube videos thanks for following along and have a great day bye bye